Hello and welcome back to uh, our third video. Uh, in this video we're going to go over problem 10-7b which corresponds to your problem 10-7a. So hopefully as we go through this, this, um, this will answer any questions that you might have. Um, but if it doesn't, you know how to get a hold of me. Reach out to me. I'd be more than happy to help you out. Okay. So what we have here, oh, sorry, what we're dealing with here is um, intangible assets, right? We have intangible assets for Willingham Company. And they tell us that they already got a patent and a copyright on the books. And they also tell us that there's amortization also included or also calculated on the patent and the copyrights. So they tell us that as of December 31st, 2015, the total intangible assets equal $126,000. Okay. How do we get that? Well, patent is seven or is a hundred thousand dollars less the amortization of 10,000 gives us 90 grand. The copyright had a cost of 60 grand. However, we have amortization associated with that 24,000. So the value of the copyright is $36,000. That's how we got the total intangibles of $126,000. Now, whenever we're amortizing something, we go right to that intangible asset. What do you, the hell you mean by that? Well, what I mean is that think about when we did depreciation, we had assets, right? And we had to have the cost of the asset, whether it's property, plan, or equipment, and then we had the accumulated depreciation associated with that so we can calculate the um, book value. We don't do that with amortization. If we amortize something, we put it right to that intangible asset, whether it's a patent or a copyright. Okay, So <clears throat> they tell us that the copyright was acquired in January of 2012. Patent was uh, acquired in January of 2015. Each of those have a useful life, okay? They give us some tra cash transactions that we need to journal, which we will. And then they want us to, after we journal the transactions, they want us to prepare journal entries to record um, the 2016 amortization expense for those intangibles. And then they want us to prepare the intangible asset section of the balance sheet as of 12-31-2016, okay? So, um, I kind of already started working on this, but let me show you what I did. Actually, let's just go back through and redo everything. Okay, the first thing you want to do, bear with me here. Okay, so we're starting from a blank sheet, right? In A1, I want you to type in your date. In section, or I'm sorry, in cell reference B1, I want you to click and drag over four columns. This is an arbitrary amount, okay? I want to create area for us to type our accounts as we do our journal entries, okay? We want to make be nice, neat, lined up, make it look good, okay? So from B1 to E1, I'm going to click Merge and Center, and then I want to click the Align Left button. Then I'm just going to get my, see the little black crosshairs? I'm at the bottom uh, right of that cell. Now I can click, keep the mouse depressed, and keep dragging. Okay, I'm just going down an arbitrary amount just to create enough, um, enough space for us to get all our journal entries in. Okay, so now everything's, these are all one cell. Okay, in B1, I want you to type in account. We're going to list our accounts here. F1, I want you to type DR period and CR period in cell reference G1. Eh, I like to merge and center these. Uh, just looks a little neater. And then I want you to go on the F column, click, and then drag over to G. And you want to get both of these highlighted. What we're going to do is we're going to make sure that we have commas and we want to get rid of any decimal places we have. Okay? All right. So, 
what we're going to do now is we're going to go ahead and um, do our journal entries. So they tell us on January 2nd, we paid 36 grand legal cost to successfully defend the patent against infringement. We already had a patent that we bought January 15th. Somebody tried to copy us, we sued them, okay? We need to do this journal entry. Now, any legal costs that, uh, that arise because we're defending a patent that we already have, what we're gonna do is we're gonna debit patents and we're gonna credit cash. So on January 1, I don't like that. So Jan 1, I'm gonna debit patents for the $36,000 and I'm gonna credit cash. Now remember, debit's always first, credit's always second. Credits should always be indented. Indent your credit. How do you do that in Excel? Super easy. If you go to the ribbon, you see a increase indent button. Click it once. Type in cash. Notice how cash is now indented. $36,000 credit. And then you always want to italicize your explanation. What did we do here? Well, defended patent. Perfect. We're done. Skip a space. Always, always, always skip a space. Okay. On January through June, we developed a new product. We incurred $230,000 in research and development costs. They tell us that in July, we received the patent, right? Its useful life is equal to its legal life, which is 10 years. So we just have R&D. R&D or research and development costs always get expensed, okay? We don't capitalize them. We don't make them part of the um, patent cost or whatever. We just book it as if it's a regular expense and hit the cash. So to do that, January through June, I have, I'm gonna abbreviate and say R&D, but this is research and development expense. And the amount was uh, 230,000. Guess what, we paid cash for this. Remember, always indent, just by si simply clicking the increase indent button, cash, $230,000, okay? Uh, what do we do? Um, R&D for product creation. I don't care what you put, as long as you know you know what it is, right? Hey, this is an R&D expense for the product we created. If we knew what the product was, we could put that in there, okay? Remember, please, always skip a space between your journal entries. It makes it easier for me to read. Uh, September 1, paid 125 grand to an X game star to appear in commercials advertising the company's products. The commercial will air in September and in October, okay? We're just going to expense the whole thing, right? We're not going to um, book a prepaid advertising expense for, you know, one half of that. We're just going to book the whole thing just to make it easier. I apologize. I don't know why it's acting all goofy. There we go. Okay, September 1, what do we do? Well, we have advertising expense. For how much? Well, it's $125,000. Credit cash. Why am I crediting cash? Because it goes down. Since I'm entering a credit, I need to make sure it's indented. I already hit my in increase indent button. Type in cash. 125000 What do we do here? Oh, we paid for advertising. Perfect. Skip a space. October 1. We got a copyright. Copyright's three hundred thousand dollars. Copyright has a useful life of fifty thousand or 
50 years, excuse me. So, on October 1, October 1, what do we have? Well, we have a new asset, cop or a new intangible asset, excuse me, copyright. We paid uh, 300000 for it. Oh. There we go. Um, How do we pay for it? Well, we paid cash. So, increase your indent, type in cash, and type in your amount. $300,000, okay? Now we need to book amortization expense. So <clears throat> this is on 1231, or we'll just say December, yeah, December 31, we have an amortization expense. And we also have our account that we need to hit. Now remember, since we're booking amortization, we don't have like a contra intangible asset account. What are you talking about? Well, remember we booked depreciation and we said, hey, accumulated depreciation is a contra asset account. And whenever we book depreciation, we hit depreciation expense for a debit and we credit that accumulated depreciation. In amortization, we don't do that. We don't have an accumulated amortization expense or accumulated amortization account. We hit that asset, whatever that asset is or whatever that intangible asset is. So first, we're going to book depreciation for patents, okay? So I'm going to debit depreciation expense and I'm going to credit patent, okay? We need to calculate the amount. Well, we started with a patent of $100,000. Okay. This is the patent that we have, $100,000. That's the original cost. Okay. It was bought in January of 2015. It lasts 10 years. So each year we have to take one, we have to amortize, amortize, amortize one-tenth of that cost, okay? So, I'm going to say equals 1 divided by 10, which is 0.1. So, what is our amortization expense for the patent that we already have? Well, it's easy. It's 100,000 times our 0.1. We get $10,000. Now, we book those legal fees as a patent, right? So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to type in that $36,000, right? How many years can we amortize this? Well, for the same 10 years, right? But think about it. We're in year 9 of that amortization, right? We had a full 10 years, or we have a full 10 years, right? We already took one year of depreciation, or I'm sorry, we took one year of amortization, so that's why we divided it by one-tenth, right? One-tenth, one-tenth, one-tenth. For 10, do that 10 times. We bought or we defended our patent in year not, in year two, we'll say. Okay. So that means that this does not this asset that we booked or that legal cost of defending the patent, we book it as a patent and we amortize it over the useful life of the patent, right? So we're in 2016. We bought this patent in 2015. Okay, no problem. We're cool, right? But in 2016, we incurred this legal expense. So we need to divide this by one-ninth, not one-tenth, right? Because at the end of the 10-year life, we're going to completely amortize that patent and any costs associated with that patent, meaning any like legal fees associated with that. We run the numbers, we have a total of $14,000 amortization expense. So I'm just going to plug that in. Okay. The next thing we have is our copyright 
Bear with me here. December 31, okay? So what kind of copyrights do we have? Well, let's think about this. We have the original copyright of $60,000 that we purchased that has a useful life of uh, 10 years, okay? So now we're going to look at the copyrights. So what do I need to book? Well, it's kind of the same thing, right? I'm going to debit amortization expense, and I'm going to credit, oh, sorry, I'm going to credit, in this case, copyrights, because that's what we're dealing with. Okay, so how many copyrights do we have? We have two, right? We have one that's $60,000. And we know that that has a useful life of how much? 10 years. So we need to take one-tenth of that cost, okay? And we see that the amortization with this patent that we already have is $6,000. Okay, let's go back. We know that the total, co the total amortization expense for the copyrights needs to be $7,500 because they were nice enough to give us that check figure. Well, wait a minute. I got $6,000. I need $7,500. Where am I going to get the other $1,500 from? Super easy. On October 1, guess what we did? Acquired a patent, or I'm sorry, uh, acquired a copyright. So I now have another $300,000 copyright. So I have two, okay? Again, that has a useful life of how much? 50 years, okay? So I'm going to take 1 50th, which ends up being 0.02. So I'm going to multiply this by 300,000, the cost of the copyright that we purchased, times my 0.02. That's $6,000. Huh, I'm off. Hmm. I have $12,000 in total copyright amortization. Problem says I should have 7,500. Oh, man. Oh, I know what I did wrong. When did I purchase this copyright, the second copyright? October 1st. Should I get a first year or a full year of amortization? Nope. I should only get two months out of the year, right? October, or I'm sorry, three months. October, November, December. I should have three months amortization. So what I need to do then is only take three twelfths of this. So then if I multiply my full year depreciate or full year amortization of six grand and I recognize that I should only get a fraction of that, actually 25% of that, I end up with 1500. So this, my friends, is the correct amortization for that second uh, copyright. There's the first one. I now have my $7,500. I can go ahead and book it. Okay. So now what we need to do is we need to go ahead and prepare the intangible uh, list that we have, right? Or our intangible list. How do they look on the balance sheet? Well, here's how they look. And I'm just going to do it underneath my journal entry. That's okay. Intangible assets, right? What's the first one I have? Well, the first one I have is my patent. Okay, well, let's think about this for a minute. I have a patent of $100,000 and I have a patent of $36,000. So I'm going to add those together. $100,000 plus my $36,000. And then what I need to do is I need to subtract out all the accumulated depreciation I have. Well, let's think about this. I had $10,000 associated with the first patent 
for year one, I booked another $10,000 for that. So I have a total of $20,000 of amortization expense for patent one, or for the patent, right? To that, I need to add the amortization that I took up a little bit for that first journal entry, that legal defense. That was four thousand dollars. Sorry, it should be a comma. Okay, so what is my patent then? Well, that's easy. I'm going to take the hundred thousand. Actually, do it. Oh, sorry. Let me do it this way. Equals open parentheses a hundred thousand plus thirty six thousand minus my uh, minus all my amortization. Well, twenty thousand plus four thousand. There we go. I have a uh, one hundred and twelve thousand dollars of amortization. Uh, did I do that right? Bear with me here. Yep, I'm good. Okay. So the next thing I need to do is my copyright. Well, that's easy, right? I ha originally had a copyright of sixty thousand dollars. Then I added. Oh, sorry. Then I added. Uh, uh, a copyright for $300,000. And then I need to subtract out my amortization, right? Well, I know I took $1,500 of amortization just for the, the $300,000 copyright that I bought. But I got to go back, right? Look what happened. The copyright that I originally had had amortization of $24,000 already associated with that. So I need to take that, I need to include that $24,000 in my amortization account. So I could say $24,000 plus my $6,000. Again, that $6,000 <coughs> is the amortization for 2016 associated with that original uh copyright that I had and then I need to add the portion of amortization or the fraction of amortization that I took for this new copyright that we bought back in October which is fifteen hundred dollars so we should get let's see let's just do it this way three hundred sixty thousand minus Twenty four thousand plus six thousand plus fifteen hundred. That gives whoa, that gives me three twenty eight, three hundred twenty eight thousand. If I underline it, I add them up. I have amortization, or I'm sorry, not amortization, I apologize. I have total intangible assets, and here's how we need to. Um, notate it. You always want to indent. Actually, bear with me. Total intangible assets of $440,500. Okay? So, <clears throat> Excuse me. I hope this cleared up any questions you may have with, um, or any questions that you have for problem 10-7B. Um, if not, that's okay. Just reach out to me. Let me know. We'll set up a, a connect, or not a connect, a um, collaborate session, and we can do one-on-ones. Totally not a problem. Okay. So good luck with your homework. If you have any questions, please feel free and reach out to me. Okay. Thank you very much and uh, have a great uh, rest of your weekend and we'll see you on Tuesday.